Welcome to Asana Solutions, YouTube's best place for everything related to Asana, process improvement, and project management. My name is Marquis, and today I'm going to be talking with you goals and how to set them up inside of Asana. This video comes to us courtesy of a subscriber who's requesting to know more about the feature. And goals is one of those things where if you don't have any, and if you're aiming at nothing in your business, you're gonna hit nothing every single time. And so this is probably one of the things that I see most underutilized when we look into Asana spaces. And so today I'm gonna to show you how to set up your goals, your sub goals, your different time periods, and then actually connect it to the work that is needed to achieve those goals. So you can get visibility, on what your teams are working on, different departments, and then your whole organization. If you're maybe more familiar with the traction framework, this might be a little bit different, but think of goals and sub goals as your objectives and your key results, and then everything just works the same way. So I hope you like this and find it informative. Subscribe, share this video with somebody, and we'll see you on the other side. All right, let's get into it. So goals is one of those things that as a company, if you don't have goals, you know, you hear this said, you know, quite often that if you aim for nothing, you'll hit it every single time. And so goals are super important to not only the growth of your organization, but the alignment of your team within the organization and different teams and departments. And so um, when we are looking inside of Asana, you know, we're familiar with home, you know, my tasks inbox i will say that in order to use the goals feature you have to be on at least the business plan um, you will have access to some of the team goals on premium but as far as organization or company goals and a lot of the features within it um, specific, specifically around time periods you will need to have the business plan so if you don't um, this is a good video for you to watch and maybe we'll encourage you to upgrade your account if you um, are able to and so first off if you haven't already if you don't understand how this works within asana i would encourage you to google the pyramid of clarity and maybe i'll do another video on that but the pyramid of, of clarity basically breaks down how the structure works you start with your mission up top um, and then you, this can be whatever it is so our mission is going to be um, let's say we are running um, an ice cream shop um, so our, our mission could be to serve the best ice cream um, to 200,000 customers worldwide. I have no idea, but that can be anything, right? So what is the thing that is driving your company forward? What is the, the purpose for doing all this? And so let's start breaking down our goals within the company goals section. And again, you're split between company goals and then team goals, and you can create a team goal for all the different teams that you have, but we're just going to do company goals first. And we're gonna click on this plus sign to simply add a goal. So our first goal, and if you're more familiar with OKRs, this might make a bit more sense to think of these goals as your objectives, and then the sub goals we're gonna create as your key results. So if you're more familiar with the you know traction or you know measure what matters format of OKRs, then this might make a bit more sense to you that way. But just think of these as goals and sub goals um, if you're not familiar. So this one could be, um, uh, open up five new ice cream locations in I don't know, Canada, right? And so this is for the entire company. If we needed to switch this to a, a team goal, we could do this from this section here. But here we are going to keep this as a company goal. Um, Jamie Staples is my, my alias in this demo space. And so the owner of this is Jamie Staples, but it's really me, Mark Emery. Um, we don't have a parent goal for this because it's sitting at the very top and our sub goals are going to feed into this. So when do we want this goal to be realized? Is this something that we want to achieve within this fiscal year, within, you know, our now Q4 and we're slowly or quickly closing that out, right? So this is maybe something that, you know, when um, we transition over to 2022, this would be a goal for next year. So by the end of next year, you know, we want to realize this goal. Or maybe this could be, you know, by the end of 2023, five locations, a bit ambitious. So by the end of 2023, that's when you want to have that realized. We want to add some collaborators on this. Maybe I'm going to add Moses and then we're going to add, who else do we have here? 
Uh, we add Tyler to it as well. And this is going to be a public goal. So this is public to members only of the space. Guests cannot see any goals. They do not have any access to this. Um, so we can make it public um, to the entire company, or we can make it private. And then in that case, we need to add our collaborators if we want them to see it. So we're going to save this goal. And there it is on the top. So we're going to add two more goals here just so we have three. So five ice cream locations, and we're going to need staff. So we need to, let's say, hire three new general managers. Um, and again, that's going to be something that we're going to need to do, you know, um, pretty quickly. So let's just say that, you know, the second half of 2022 is when we want to have those people hired by. Maybe we want to start training them you know, before the locations open up. So we're going to set that goal a little bit ahead. And again, this is going to be a public goal and we're going to create another one. We're going to shift that goal up there. Um, and the third one is going to be um, source a, uh, let's see, new mind blowing ice cream flavor. I don't know. There we go. So when do we want to have this by? Maybe we want to start testing this, you know, by the first half of the year. Maybe there's something we don't want to achieve by the end of Q1. So we can at least start this and, you know, find that flavor and refine it. And, you know, that can be one. So we have one there. Um, there we go. And again, this is a public goal. I'm going to add another collaborator. I'm going to add Chris in here and we're going to save that goal. So now we have our three goals, all right? So we're going to open up the first one. As you can see, there's no status, there's no metric set, and we're going to take care of that right now. So when you click into it, the first thing you're going to want to do is set a progress metric. So if we click on that, you have several different options. You can set a percentage goal, a number goal. Um, you can set a um, dollar value or a currency value. So in this case, let's just recap here. Open up five new ice cream locations in Canada. So it's probably pretty easy to say we're going to make this a numbered goal. Right. Right now, how many do we have? We have zero locations. Um, our target is five. And I want to be reminded of this goal and check in on how we're doing. Um, let's see. Let's say monthly. There's things we have to do. Right. There's um, bank loans we need to secure. There's permits. There is, you know, contractors we need to source. Right. So every month we want to make sure are we moving towards this goal? We're going to save that. And I'm just going to add in some of those sub goals that I, I spoke about. So we want to find and secure um, a construction company. Because they're going to have to build this for us. And so we're going to create that goal. And this is one of our sub goals. So it's related to the company again. The parent goal is already there because we're making this within um, that, that higher goal. And then instead of this by the end of 22, we're going to need this a lot earlier. So I would say that by the first half of, you know, next year, this is when we're going to want to secure this construction company so we can start plans and get permits and all of the things that will be needed. So let's keep going here. Another sub goal could be um, source land for the new locations, right? So where are we going to build these things? And so again, um, by the end of um, maybe, you know, half the year, we're going to want to put that in there by, by mid, you know, fiscal year 2022. So we're going to put that in there and we're going to save that goal. And as you can see, there are metrics within these as well. So if we click into each of these sub goals, we're going to add metrics. So you have to really think what works for your company and your use cases here, but, you know, source land for new locations. Um, so we need five new locations. So we could set this to be uh, a number again, and then we need five sites, right? So again, we want to check in on that, you know, um, maybe quarterly, and we're going to change that reminder. And what that will do is it will actually create a task that will pop up um, every three months for you um, on the day that you created this goal. So you'll see that pop up and it'll be prompted to um, go in and check on it. Now here we can add more information. So source land for new locations. Um, we need land that, excuse me, that has already um, been cleared. Um, we want one on a mountaintop and one in a valley. Um, these locations should be close to big 
city centers um, and schools. Right, we can really put anything we want in those sections. And so within this, if we needed to break this down even more, guess what else we can do? We can continue adding sub goals. And so again, when we're prompted to come in and update this, right, um, we're checking in quarterly and we're like, how are we doing? Oh, we, we are actually on track. Um, starting to find land. That's our update to the team and our collaborators that will follow this. Um, how many locations have we secured? We've secured two locations out of our five. We're doing really great. You know, um, let's add a quick summary. The locations have been great. Um, we're uh, very excited to start building. You can tell that there's no prep for any of these walkthroughs. Just kind of making it up as I go. Um, but thank you to um, uh, one of the viewers. I can't remember your name at this moment. I'll add it in the show notes who um, actually requested this video. So if you're one of those people who wants to see something specific in Asana, please leave a comment and let me know. Um, what we accomplished, we found two of five locations, right? So, and then what's blocked? Um, the city did not want to release the permits. And what's next? Um, get our lawyers involved. Um, involved, right? So it can be really simple like that. We can add in other sections. We can add attachments here as well, images, documents. And then we can show or hide any other um, fields that we, we need here, if we needed to add in a custom date for whatever reason, um, if we had one. So I'm going to post this update. There we go. And it's going to show that we are 40% complete of this you know, sub goal. And it's going to show again what it relates to. So let's go back up to our, our main, our parent goal here. And so that's what it really looks like. I'm not going to drill down into all the other goals we created, but what this can look like after you're done is you have your parent goal here at the top. You have your sub goals and you can see at a glance all the different views. So imagine if we'd created sub goals for hiring three new general managers, sourcing a new mind blowing ice cream flavor, right? We can see the different timeframes here as well as edit the different timeframes. Now, there's one more thing that I do wanna show you that makes this feature in Asana really killer. So um, we believe that you know the work that happens should all happen in the same place. So we have our goals here. They're not off in another spreadsheet somewhere. They are right here, right in front of us. And so what we want this to look like is um, we wanna be able to link this to any supporting work. And so you can link projects, right? Because these goals are only realized because we have a methodology and a thought process for how this all comes together. Um, there are people that are going to work on these specific things so we can continue moving them forward. They don't just happen. So the supporting work. So let's just say we had, these are all just random projects in this demo space, but let's just say that, you know, request for creative production was actually um, land sourcing um, project where if we click to it, this is what the project looks like. And we have a section here. I'm going to create a new section and we're going to call it land sites, right? So our first land site is find a mountain location, find a valley location, um, find a location close to schools, and you get the picture, right? So once these things have been assigned, these tasks have been assigned to someone, we obviously set a due date that's within the time frame of our goal as well, right? Um, we can basically just check these off. And then because it's linked to our main goal, we can see that progress right there and then update our status accordingly. Um, and like anything else, we can use the comment section to mention different team members, to ask questions, to give, you know, kudos and appreciation, right? This all lives, um, this all lives in one space. And so if for whatever reason you needed to change a goal, if you put one in the wrong space, you can just 
change the parent goal right here and remove, you know, this, this goal that we've created from the parent goal. So um, really flexible, um, really something um, that, you know, makes this, this tool just um, work so much better if you're utilizing all of it. And th the, the same is true for team goals. So let's just put in this Asana Champions team, right? This could also be an Asana nonprofits, right? We want to add in our other teams like so. That's all we would do. And so within these teams, obviously the, the members of, of those teams are going to have access to these goals. And then you're basically just doing the same thing, but instead of it being a company goal, it's related to the team. And so sometimes I get the question, what's the difference? Why do I use company goals versus team goals? And really it is, you know, if, if one of these teams was actually titled, you know, um, construction, sourcing, board or committee, right? That team would solely be responsible for one of those sub goals, right? So their parent goal in this case, if we go here, would be source um, a new construction company. And this, this team or this committee is formed only to do this. They don't have anything to do with ice cream flavors or new locations or permits. Their sole responsibility is to source a construction company. And their goals would include you know, getting a, a short list of construction companies, getting resumes, getting references, getting, you know, um, all the necessary paperwork together, putting together an RFP that could all be related to one team and they don't have anything to do with the company goals, but they are a part of that overall company goal. So that is probably the best explanation I can give you at this point. If you have any questions or if I went too quickly, or if you want me to touch on anything that you saw on the screen that I didn't cover, please let me know. But thanks for listening. Um, subscribe. I've been so happy with the subscribers that are coming on, but if you got value from this, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you can get notifications, and please share this video with someone else so that we can um, reach more viewers just like you. Thanks for stopping by. We'll talk to you next time. Bye for now.